Well, over the course of the past few weeks, we've uh, established that it's possible to craft your own electric football figurines and bases out of readily available materials and also very inexpensive material. And uh, to my surprise and delight, uh, what we've discovered is that these figurines perform at a, a serviceable entry level, arguably as well as, if not better than, uh, the figures and bases that come with an electric football game with the added bonus that it requires absolutely no tweaking skills to get these up and running. Now, this project was born out of necessity as an economical solution to create uh, a bunch of different teams in different uh, jersey colors and uh, to put some bases beneath their feet. Uh, if I tried to do the same thing with uh, conventional plastic figurines and, and normal plastic bases, it would cost me hundreds of dollars. This cost me a couple boxes of cereal, a pack of cardstock paper that I've had for over 12 years and I've only used one sheet on this project so far, some colored pencils, and printer paper. Now these will never match the performance level of a plastic base on a good, or a plastic figurine on a good base, but, you know, for a beginner or for a tightwad enthusiast like myself, these are the bee's knees. But uh, the next, uh, uh, obstacle I've set out to tackle is scale. Now let me quantify that. Uh, as you can see, these paper figurines are about the same size as a typical plastic figurine on their bases. The uh, height is just about the same and the footprint of the base plate is just about the same. But as you can see, these figurines take up quite a lot of real estate on the field. Um, to scale, uh, these figures would be about 12 to 13 feet tall. Giants. About double the size of uh, an actual human being. Just to remind you, this is a, a 9092 Pro Bowl field, which is 36 inches long by 18 inches wide. Up until, uh, if, I don't know, February, this was the largest field you could buy through Tudor Games. Of course, enthusiasts have been making much larger fields than this for years. And Tudor now produces uh, a scale field that's... Uh, 48 inches long by 24 inches wide. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, those fields start at $300, plus tax, plus shipping. Um, all said and done, that's going to be around $400, even for the, uh, the, the cheapest model. And enthusiasts, uh, scale fields, or monster boards are going to cost much more. And the truth of the matter is, if I had $400 to spend right now, I'd buy a gaming console that can play hundreds of games rather than uh, a $400 board game that can kind of, sort of, play one game if you stretch your imagination as far as it'll go. And anyway, I've already bought an electric football game. So, if you can't increase your field size, what's the only logical uh, alternative? Well, it's to decrease the size of the figurine and base. Now, uh, that's what I set out to do tonight, and here's the prototype. Uh, that's roughly 50% half size from this, which is going to be closer to the uh, actual size of a human being on this 36-inch uh, by 18-inch field. Uh, as you can see now, it only takes up about half the space, roughly, I mean, not quite. Uh, now, the, uh, the template, the figurine, the paper here itself is one half size of this, and I just sort of had to eyeball the base. And, of course, the prongs is just uh, one of these uh, rectangles cut in half. Now, was this any more difficult to produce than this? The answer is no. Uh, remember, cardstock is very easy to cut. It's very easy to fold. It's very easy to curl. So, no, I had no trouble at all. And, of course, the rest of this was just academic. Um, just, you know, scaled down from this. So now, you know, once I produce, well, well, we'll start out with just, you know, 22 players, two different teams, so we can run some scrimmages. Uh, now we can set up our offensive and defensive lines roughly between the hashes because the uh, definition of base width has changed since the uh, base plate itself is smaller. And so that's going to look more realistic. Now your wide receivers can go out beyond the numerals and still not look like they're standing right beside a tight end. Listen, this is miniature, miniature football. Just, uh, you know, downsizing the figures a little bit for my own needs. 
and my own satisfaction. But the real question is, well, how do they perform? Well, they perform as well as the uh, larger paper figures. They are susceptible to falling over because there's no weight on them whatsoever, and these are actually way less. So I, that's why I've got the motor turned down. As you can see, it still fell over. So there's another cost-cutting solution, lower battery power. Lower power means your batteries are going to last longer. Smaller scale might increase the difficulty of the game itself, um, particularly the passing game if you're using passing sticks, because you know now there's not as much surface area for this base to catch the uh, the ball with, and that's to be expected. And you know, I'm okay with that. Um, it opens up the run game a little. Even dive plays now are are more feasible with the, the smaller bases, the smaller footprints, and you know an in run and uh, an off tackle and your uh, Toss sweep play now. If you make some looping bases, you, you've got a lot more surface area here in the flat to swing around and get around the uh, defenders. But let's just show you the size comparison with an actual plastic electric, electric football figure. That's how small it is. And uh, from above, let's see, this uh, base would fit entirely inside this base if uh, you know there were no workings and poster putty inside this base no prongs or poster putty so uh there you go uh, yes it's very possible to shrink these down and yeah i'm gonna make a couple teams of these if i like it um oh my god am i gonna go back and make all the the squads for all these um i mean folks we're gonna have all the time in the world there's gonna be another lockdown i can almost promise you that Got to have something to do. I'm not going to stop making the uh, uh, standard size ones. I mean, I'm already five teams in. Why would I stop there? But, you know, I could I could easily go back and make, you know, 11 home, 11 away jerseys for, you know, every team. That, that would kind of fast track some gameplay footage, wouldn't it? And, uh, you know, like I said, these are no more difficult to make. It uses less materials. And, uh, you know, it's no more difficult to you know, draw the, uh, and use colored pencils to draw the uh, details on these than it is on a larger scale. So now it's going to be a little more difficult to write information in there. For example, if I had Ben Roethlisberger in front of me here, I'd just have to put Big Ben in here for his name. Um, and there's, you know, other players in the same boat might have to just abbreviate their names in such a way that I know, ex you know there's only one logical name it could be. But, you know, it looks like this is the next step in the development of this uh, economical solution for electric football. If you can't afford a bigger field, shrink the players. And, you know, that's, uh, now, that it, now that I've done it, that's, that's so obvious. But uh, there you go. Let's uh, let him run down the field again a little here. Yeah, he's going to fall over on my field there anyway. All my figures are falling right there, so... There we go. Would these benefit from weight? I don't know. I like I said, the card stock itself doesn't seem to, uh, you know, benefit mu from much weight uh, because it, after all, it is paper. It's just a very tough paper. But you know, with this design right here, I mean, look like they're working just fine. So there you go, miniature, miniature football. Stay tuned. I'll do some more with this, and we'll have fun with it. Uh, talk to you soon.